Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of news to cover today. Episode 21 of Earth Catastrophe Cycle Series came out last night, and I'm glad most of you agree it was a daisy cutter. But let's go to spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on our star much quieter than in the days leading in. No more solar flares and no more eruptions. The coronal holes are turning through. In the solar wind, we have yet to see a second impact, so the multiple impact concern is lessened every hour separating them. We do have a second CME and coronal hole stream on the way, and the phi angle shift upcoming from Earth to Sun pointing, which has held for 48 straight hours. The coronal holes turning out have nearly a 100% chance of impacting Earth with their solar wind in the next 24 hours or so. Let's come to the best weather satellite of the modern age. A major flow out of the south lit up the skies with electricity and dropped a number of concerns there and in the forecast for tonight. Tornadoes roared in southeastern New Mexico, along with major rainfall. It has rained here in the desert for almost two straight days. And of course, the hail. And it's just going to get worse as Bomba Genesis is forecast for the low, which would drive an unfathomable March snow event in the plains and severe threats to the south. Eyes open. It's a rough 24 hours ahead of us, with cold records as well as snow records, which are both still falling by the day, about to eat their Wheaties and Popeye spinach and annihilate cold and snow records tonight and into tomorrow. Also noteworthy, storm is tearing through South Africa early this morning, driving major flooding and again, the hail. This time, the hailstones can be considered extremely dangerous. Up first in the articles, we're learning a bit more about the dust rings of our inner system taking a closer look at the dust ring of Venus here. And by the way, all the inner planets have these rings orbiting with them. We find that it is not only dust, but tiny asteroids and rocky chunks at Venus, far larger than the dust around the other planets. This is perplexing, because if Venus formed where it is back when the rest of the planets formed, it would have the dusty ring as well. But instead, it's like looking back in time to when larger rocks were still agglomerating into planets, but here, only around Venus. One of two Astro 2020 white papers we'll be plugging today is the plan to hunt for evidence of cosmologically recent nova near to our solar system. Near. That's a fun way to put it, isn't it? We support the search. So folks, many of the moons of our solar system have subsurface oceans, like Enceladus you see here at Saturn. But what they just discovered at Jupiter's Europa is next level. By interacting with the Jovian magnetic fields, electric currents and magnetic fields on the moon are induced, which further induce and aid an equatorial jet in the subsurface ocean of the moon. If a moon can use its planet's magnetism, could a planet use its own, or the sun's? Last but not least, the other Astro 2020 white paper, all about the circumgalactic medium, the missing circumgalactic medium. Scientists are pretty sure, and plasma universe physicists know, that the vast majority of matter in the galaxy is not locked in stars, but sparse and spread through and around it largely hugging the galactic electric and magnetic fields. They say that even ALMA could not detect a sparse medium, and they want to change that. This is critical because if they find a bit more than they expect, it will explain the missing mass at galaxies and alleviate the need for dark matter. We greatly appreciate your support. If you missed episode 21 or need to catch up on the other episodes in the series, I recommend it as we'll be charging forward soon. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.